Joining us uh, now for more on all of it is uh, Mark Fields, former Ford Motor Company president and CEO, and of course, a CNBC contributor. Uh, what are you expecting, Mark? Well, I think as, as you heard from Phil, uh, you know, the, well, I think one of the biggest things is the outlook for deliveries in the second half. I agree with Phil. I don't think they're going to give a number. But obviously, given the semiconductor shortage, uh, that's going to have impact on the whole industry, and everybody's going to want to know how does that relate uh, to Tesla. You know, I think the there'll be a lot of attention on the gross margins, and I think the reason for this, Andrew, is their mix should be better in the quarter. And what I mean by that is they're really ramping up their Model Y production, and they they they're able to attain a higher revenues on the Model Y than the Model Three. And they have about essentially the same cost because it comes off the same platform. So I think that's going to be another focus, particularly because right now they make their money on selling CO2 tax credits to other automakers. So improving that automotive gross margin and showing progress around there, I think is going to be on the tops of minds for a lot of investors. Where do you think things stand in terms of, I mean, we, we talked about the market share uh, on a large, on a long-term basis, but where do you where do you see Tesla now relative to everybody else, and how how far ahead are they, or are they not? Well, they they continue to dominate the EV segment, but their share is starting to erode. And uh, you know, I think you mentioned it earlier. The through the first through May of this year, the EV sales are up about double. Uh, the overall industry is up about you know thirty to forty percent. So. You're seeing the, the pie, if you will, get bigger. That is good for Tesla, because even though they have more competitors now, they essentially had the market to themselves, and now they have competitors such as you know, Ford and Hyundai and, and VW selling electric vehicles, their share is coming down, but their volume is going to continue to grow because that pie is going to get bigger. Uh, and also, at the same time, they're adding more capacity with the new plants. And every product that they're coming out with is incremental to the product lineup. Uh, and so that's going to bode well for them, even though their share will come down. And listen, they had the market to themselves for a long time. Now they have some competition. And the key is the overall pie growing, and that's going to be good for Tesla. Well, that was the other question I was going to ask, because, you know, we talk about the EV market. Is that the, is that the market, or is the TAM, if you will, really just cars, period? Well, I think the overall, the TAM is, is to your point, is the whole market. Uh, right now, uh, the EVs represent about 2.3% of the total industry. So it's, it's still very, very small. But you have to look at the products that are coming into the marketplace, right? The reason that share is going to, it has grown versus last year and will continue to grow is first, you're going to have more models. Over 100 models are going to be introduced of EVs in the next two years. You have more body styles available for customers and at different price points. So, you know, it is the entire market, and that's, I think, what investors look at. They look at that TAM, they look at the growth of EVs in general, and then they look at Tesla's pretty dominant position right. today, and that's what's going to drive it. Mark, I don't know if you can see the screen right now, but we're, we're listing uh, a bunch of electric vehicle companies, including Lucid, uh, by the way, which just closed uh, this, uh, this SPAC transaction. And, and I'm curious, and this goes maybe back to the TAM issue, you have all these startups in this space, and the question is, how many of them are going to fundamentally be, be able to disrupt the legacy players, or whether you believe long-term so many of these legacy players will just be in this business? Well, I do think the legacy players or the established uh, players, they're coming out with very credible products now. You look at Ford with the Mach-E, you look at Volkswagen with their ID4, Hyundai's come out with their uh, Ionic. Uh, so you're seeing these established OEMs bring their uh, their full game from a product execution standpoint on top of their ability to drive costs down, come out with quality products. I think in the some of the new startups, listen, there's going to be car, there will be more losers than there will be winners. And the reason for that is as you have the established automakers come out with very credible products, consumers are going to say, hey, how much risk do I want to take? in buying an electric vehicle. Do I want to buy it from an established OEM or automaker where I can get service uh, and I have confidence that that company is going to be around five years from now? Or are we going to go with one of these small startups, which by the way, a lot of the cars that they're selling, they're, they're price points that you know not many people can afford. And there's only such a big market 
the market is only so big for people willing to buy $75,000 cars and up. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.